Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's time to talk professional wrestling. It's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 488, live from Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios. Ready to get at this, ready to talk professional wrestling, my favorite time of the week, preceded by the uh, less but almost equal favorite times of the week of all the other wrestling shows we do on this network over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. With me from Flood Town, USA, it is Bobby F. J. Town. I'm from Hockeyville this week. Oh, from well, next week. Next week. What? Next week's Hockeyville. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Johnstown, yeah. right? Yeah. John, yeah. I mean, Johnstown. Johnstown. We're going to have a, a uh, professional hockey game yeah. at the Johnstown War Memorial. Yeah. And I couldn't even watch the Penguins game tonight, which kind of made me mad, but that's another story from another well, time. Well, there's that. Also, yeah. with us from uh, California. PA, PA. He's a sound guy behind uh, the RWA, actually, and uh, we'll probably talk a little bit of that strangely not in the Indie Minute later uh, on this episode. He is Wheels, Hot Wheels, RWA. I thought I fixed your Twitter. I'm sorry about that, sir. That is all right. So I'll forgive you this time because I say I get to talk about us on the main show, but you'll find out why in a little bit. Yes, yes. And also joining us, he's patron extraordinaire. He is the man behind the WrestlingRevolution.com. He's coming at us from El Paso, Texas. It's Antonio Garza. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me one more time here at the Wrestling Nation show. I'm happy to be here. Well, it, it, it's going to be very fitting considering some of the news we'll be getting into later in the in the in the episode in the first hour here. Uh, but uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out uh, everything going on. Subscribe, subscribe. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We got a fancy new WordPress theme. I hit the install button and everything looks pretty. No, it's a little more than that, but still, uh, we spiffed it up a little bit. Hopefully, it works a little better on your mobilized phone. And we have a lot of stuff going on. Other shows about indie wrestling, about specific shows about total divas if you're into that kind of crap and uh so much more uh and of course uh great articles people are going insane over the security article that mark matt carlins did a couple of weeks ago please go check that out uh as thousands of you have read this article and and it's it's getting a lot of play and i'm really appreciating that great work there by matt carlins very fitting this week too <laughs> very very fitting this week yes and also uh you can uh drop us a line 412-206-WMS0 or that email address good times good times at wrestling mayhem show.com you can drop your thoughts uh participate in the big question of the week or whatever the case may be uh go there check that out uh and with that also patreon you can support us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh just like our uh, patreon supporters have been supporters for a while and some new ones first of all no diggity Woo! and of course ed burke and this guy over here in el paso texas hi garza (laughs) thank you very much you know what happens you know what happens when you are a, a patron supporter and you're participating in the show and you're that big of a fan, you're giving money. A lot of times you end up on the show or you end up having pizza with me at Slice on Broadway as I did last week with a patron from the Awesome Cast. So that's the kind of stuff that happens around here. Dreams can come true, right, Garza? Hell yeah. I, I, used my, I used my patron in the bank uh, briefcase to get into the show today. So. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. You and came to a piece of slice on Broadway, and then that'll. Not, I don't think that's work. That'll work. Garza, I'm not going to let you use your patron in the bank <laughs> briefcase. <laughs> oh then, God, it's Kane. And then oh. the studio catches on fire. Uh, and then. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, it was sitting right there. It was sitting right there. It was getting mad during the raw wrap up that it was on the owl. Uh, but it's creepier because the owl doesn't have an eyeball. I don't know if you can see that in HD. But anyways, um, let's get into the stories of the week. And thank you so much, everybody, who joined us. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, let's get into our stories of the week. First of all, of course, there was the Night of Champions this Yay. Sunday. Yes. <laughs> champions night of of terrors night of terrors it was a little bit wasn't it we had the pay-per-view we had a a pretty good raw uh we talked about last night on the wrap-up a lot of fun um it's interesting that the future of wwe is the 90s it's like the portlandia of professional wrestling right now um it's 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 we've got kane ending a pay-per-view with sting in the main event uh, what is happening? And are you happy about that? Bobby, what? you're a child of the 90s. Oh, actually, the child of the 80s, probably, right? Child of the 80s, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm old. Um, but the you say that, Sorg. However, all of the major titles were held by NXT people going into the main event. Former NXT people. Right. Rollins had both the the WWE and, and US titles. Pay or Charlotte had the women's championship or Divas Championship or Stamp or Tramp Stamp Championship of the World. Um, Kevin Owens had the Intercontinental title. And the New Day had the tag team titles, which Big E was in and Nick Xavier Woods was in NXT at one time. So kudos to them. It's awesome. But yeah, nineties, nineties were all around too. But but that 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 kind of still works then, right? I mean, the new guys, you know, the, the those guys are are really kind of, and you know, John Cena is going to fight just a bunch of NXT people. I mean, who yeah. isn't looking forward to John Cena versus Finn Balor in the coming weeks? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it, 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 it just like it's it's going to happen, I'll right? Tell you the pattern, Sorg. Huh? Finn will win the first one. John Cena will win the next two. <laughs> or something like that or something like that um but but no it was a fun show i i, I enjoyed the show actually um i think man i don't know if i want to get to this point here but um no it's not anything to, you know i i see people on the on the on the group saying oh it's nothing to call home about it's like what it's wrestling just enjoy it you know yeah, it's, it's WWE. you why are you surprised by anything wwe does at this point and uh and agarza are you the one that that said that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see you smiling over there. <laughs> but okay, okay. So, Garza, what did you think of the show? You are definitely on the other side of the opinion here. Uh, for, for me, the, the show had uh, decent matches, mm-hmm. uh, but I wasn't a big fan of the booking. Okay. Uh, so, like, I didn't like, uh, like, for instance, Charlotte. I think she should have won at this point because the big match was on Raw last Monday. So it kind of felt like undeserving. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I actually did like how they booked the double champion thing. Uh, the problem is that it made Seth Rollins seem like the super baby face for being forced to fight two matches and and then losing one title but defending the second one. It, it just seems backwards. Some stuff that WWE is doing is kind of backwards. It always has been, hasn't it? Though I mean, I feel like um um well, I, mean, I kind of made the the comment last night. Uh, actually, my father in law was watching Raw with us, and he hadn't watched for a while. And and, and Rusev comes out with the New Day. It's like, oh, so are these the good guys? You know, seeing how Rusev, uh, how New Day mm-hmm. is and everything. I was like, actually, yes, because New Day are just about positivity, and they're trying to save the trees and the tables. And Rusev is the American dream that came to this country and 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 uh, and and made something of himself. Completely, completely the good guys in this this kind of situation. Um, what what's that wheels? That makes total sense. Honestly, it's like you put that perfectly to him. I mean, I think that if I didn't know that they were the bad guy, but I'd sit there and watch. I'd go on. Those are the good guys because you want to keep those tables safe from the bad Dudley boys. It's all about environmentalism. And, and, Yeah, because in the long run, like like Ziggler is the guy that stole your girlfriend, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, it, we, we we're like, especially when they called him hairless, that just weirded me out, and now I can't think, <laughs> I can't stop thinking about that. Um, 
oddly. But anyways, other than that, <laughs> but no, you're right. I, I think I think there was some fun stuff there. Uh, you know, I, 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 the tag match being a disqualification, eh, eh, you know. Uh, but hey, we get more of the Dudleys versus New Day, and with reason at this point, um, because just they're just being being interesting. Um, did anybody notice? Did it seem like the New Day turned up the annoyance factor on Raw this week? Yes, they did, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. It was. They're the best thing in wrestling right now. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Can you please explain to me, though, how do you get a piece of wood stuck in your buttocks when you're face down on a table? Well, he kind of turned turn sideways, though. No, he was. He wasn't face. He was face down, or he's face up. Because remember, he was twitching. He was like well, facing up. Yeah, he's twitching a lot. So I mean, mm. he could. I don't know. It's like, I don't it's know, possible. but it was entertaining. Mm-hmm. Well, I noticed that he did the Devon kind of um, 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 shaking, uh, like convulsing yeah. injury kind of situation i thought that was kind of an interesting homage as well so um so okay and that's roll around so we got we got kane coming back he's got mask version and non-mask version of kane um best kane storyline so far in the case of one raw since, well, since best, <laughs> best kane since uh, joseph parks yeah i was gonna say if it didn't seem familiar <laughs> what well, doesn't it seem they're doing a lot of that uh there's been a lot of complaints about nxt um kind of ripping off a lot of indie ideas some friends of the show included and uh you know we had the double champion thing on two pay-per-views on the same weekend and i did yeah. not read mm-hmm. the spoilers of ring of honor i know somebody uh actually i think uh, uh mad mike actually wrote in his thoughts on that pay-per-view uh so we'll read that a little bit later but uh, that was interesting. Again, kind of the Kane Joseph Park E thing, where there's the not not Kane Kane, and then there's the the, the other one. You know, and hopefully it doesn't take a year. We already know he's the other guy. Okay, um, but uh, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. I kind of wish D Bry would come back at this point. But, but Kane's a lot funnier than the whole Joseph Park thing because it was kind of entertaining seeing like Seth Rutten into the office and confront him and like, what do you mean? I was, I was at home recuperating. I wasn't the one. I don't mean, I don't know what you're talking about. And he still, and he did it with the authority and he's uh, just mentioning what you said on the wrap up last night of even blaming Stephanie. Like, where is my mask? It was in your hands. So this is your fault if he's out. Right, right. Um, and also coming from that, uh, of our 90sification of Raw and the pay-per-view, Divas Revolution, a big change last night uh, with Paige page turning bomb. Pa- the page bomb on Charlotte. Is this the promise of the Divas Revolution? Uh, Garza, are you are you all hail Stephanie McMahon yet on this one? And, and the latest, uh, 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 re- re- I know you're not kind of happy with the way, way Charlotte got the belt, but you got to be happy about Charlotte versus Paige. Yeah, I'm actually happy that they finally decided to break the team. Uh, I think they need to also kind of break the other two. So we start getting more combinations. I think that's that's one thing that really hurt the Divas Revolution when they started that we were not going to be able to see uh, Charlotte versus Becky or Paige versus Charlotte. And those combinations were going to be the thing that was going to like really, really spark the, this revolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm okay with the, the, the promo from Paige. Uh, it, it kind of made me feel bad for Ric Flair because it was just like hearing how he was she was berating her, his daughter. But uh, it was okay. Uh, That's why he cried. Yeah, but <laughs> point of note is that the biggest burial of those divas was Rosa Mendes because she didn't even mention her. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? <laughs> yeah, that guy. Girl. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> was it about divas or Kane? It's about divas. Um, okay. Oh, no, I was glad to see Maddie back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I think she was taking care of Tyson, but it was good to see her being weaving back, woven back into the storylines. So that's cool. 
Right, right. And even the uh, do you even work here anymore uh, lines were, were, were kind of a nice touch because I think we were all asking the same questions, right? Um, yeah. I mean, all together, I, I, again, I, this is my um, hashtag, it's just a TV show kind of take on, on, on WWE. Um, I uh, Last night's Raw, and you're not, they're not going to do this every week. You know, They're not going to be able to pull it off every week. But uh, last night's Raw kind of had my attention a bit more than usual. Uh, just kind of up and down the board. I don't know if it's the way I was watching or whatever the case may be, but and maybe I say that like too often whenever it doesn't kind of, like, it's an okay show, you know. Um, but I'm really surprised lately by SmackDown. Like, I think if you're upset with Raw, like I think a lot of people would be well served by skipping Raw and going to watch SmackDown at this point. You get half a Raw on it anyways. You, well, yeah, kind of. And, and a review is anything important, right? And if you're sick of Sci- if you're sick of John Cena, watch SmackDown. He's not there, guys. You know, uh, uh, Cena doesn't work on Tuesday nights, and uh, and uh, and it's really kind of the Shield night. If you like seeing Rollins, Reigns, and Dean Ambrose and the Wyatts do stuff, that the more than just uh, coming out and talking and maybe having a throwdown like they do on Monday nights, uh, you get something different. You know, uh, we you get more cosmic wasteland. You get more of this other stuff. Um, I think I don't know if it's uh, the pressures are less because it's not live TV and three hours, but we we have generally I think uh, just kind of better stuff there. And yes, you're going to see it again on Raw, but you get to see the kind of the 1.0 of it where it's like it's fresh on on SmackDown. And the uh, and the celebration of the of uh, uh, Nikki Bella's um, win was actually kind of entertaining. So nobody showed up. Nobody showed up, and then people got kicked. I was hoping that was going to lead to a breed turn, but Man. we can only be so lucky on that point. So, any other thoughts about Knights of Le- Night of Legends and the uh, fallout here in the last twenty four hours? Bree's too busy pulling tissues out of her bosoms. <laughs> that non- is true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> we, we have a, a change every week. We never know if the fellows are face or evil. Yeah. But- yeah. It just depends on who they're up against. I mean, mm-hmm. if they're up against Team Bad, they're the good guys. If they're against uh, PCB before Paige's turn, it was they were the bad guys. So it's, it just depends on who they're against. Um, are you pointing out in the chat room that Ryback is OG, OG uh, NXT? <laughs> what? So if you want to call yeah. that out, well, hey, so is uh, so is D Bry, right? So is yeah, uh, that's true. Who yeah, else? I guess if you count that. Barrett. Uh, uh, and, For and from, being politically correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about politically, but no, yeah. that's not what this show is. But anyways. I'm going to go read The Secret after this is over. <laughs> but hey, Kevin Owens, Intercontinental Champion. Keep you guys updated. Okay. Let me know about The Secret. <laughs> all right on that point if you want to go check out other people that could be wwe champion uh someday in the future you can go check out uh indie wrestling.us it's our site part of sorgatron uh where there's a lot of re- releases not just stuff that we're we're putting out there but also stuff uh from our friends like vicious outcast wrestling come up soon is going to be that big crazy death match tournament that just got done just got released uh we'll be having that up here in the next day or so uh but also stuff from like the iwc including the uh, cage fury with a big cage match against with tommy dreamer and rhino hey he's in nxt how about that uh you can get that on dvd digital download or individual matches 605 wrestling got some great guys like uh greg valentine greg hammer valentine and uh demolitions axe and sabu on the same show and of course the big one that just got released on digital download you can also pre-order on dvd right now uh, the big cruiserweight title match between amazing red and sanjay dutt We'll get into the importance of that here in a few moments. Uh, but you can go pick that up. The entire DVD, digital download, or the individual... You get the individual match for just $1.99, and you're going to enjoy that. Uh, please go check that out. Support Indie Wrestling. Support IndieWrestling.us. And support the show in the process. Uh, so let's get into... Well, first, let's get the good news. Let's 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 start this on some po- positivity. Some positivity. I don't know the clap. We saved the tables. We saved the tables. We <laughs> saved, and somebody saved the lucha. Garza, yeah. what the heck is going on, man? Well, for those who are alluding their 
Lord of the Flies Fantasy have not been in on the, in the internet this weekend. It was announced that Lucha Underground is coming back at the start of 2016. Yay! I think they're going to start doing their their tapings uh, in the last quarter of the year. And according to the news, they're staying in El Rey. They're staying in Boyle Heights. So that mm -hmm. would kind of indicate that they got a bunch of money. If they didn't have to change networks and if they, they kept the uh, LA. Uh, so uh, El Rey uh, Twitter tweeted it, then later on the, the rest of the roster started tweeting the, the announcement that this this beautiful piece of uh, wrestling artwork is coming back. <laughs> Finally, my life will have a meaning. <laughs> And and that means the rest of us need to catch up. Uh, <laughs> yes. What's that, Bobby? I'm caught up. You're caught up now. I'm caught up. That's good. That's good. Um, no, I mean it is. I, you know, I'm really. I have been shocked. I don't know if you you guys have run into this, but sometimes a lot of times at wrestling shows, um, I'm like, yeah, Lucha Underground, it's pretty cool, huh? And they're like, yeah, hey, I actually don't like Lucha Underground. And then I automatically go, I'm, I automatically go into Inquisition mode and say, why don't you like that? What is wrong with you? Um, and, and I try to get some some thoughts out of it, and it just boils down to I think um, they don't like the style, you know, they don't like the atmosphere. So it's not for everybody. It's not going to be for everybody, you know. Um, some people don't like Robert Rodriguez films. You know, uh, how dare they? I know, I know. Crazy, crazy. Uh, but no, this is great news. This is amazingly great news. And, and good to see that, um, especially if we may have a dearth of wrestling on Wednesday nights, we still have Lucha. Wouldn't it be amazing if we do actually end up with Wednesday Night War being Lucha NXT? It's going to be the best two hours of wrestling you're going to watch every week, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So. I just wondered if I just wonder if they're going to go back to the temple, like if they're going back to, to, to um, Boyle Heights. Yeah, they 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 announced that they're going to tape in Boyle Heights. Like I'm not sure if they're going to uh, like redecorate the place as the old temple, but uh, hopefully they will. Cool. Yeah, so Helico, Helico needs to that office to fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Amazing. Um, and, uh, and, and other than that, there was a bit of a, uh, wrestling war that happened here in Pittsburgh. Um, did we talk about it on this show or impact or on the indie mayhem show? We talk about indie, indie wrestling, indie mayhem show. Uh, so, uh, so this is a little bit of indie inside news, but I mean, kind of a look at something. This has kind of been news. Um, and, and I want to, uh, you know, disclaim, we have friends of the show on both sides of the fence on this one. There are friends of the show that were involved, of course, with impact wrestling here in the Pittsburgh area. Um, this past weekend, Kurt Angle. Kurt, yeah, the Kurt <laughs> Angle for one, but I was thinking more DJ Zima Ion as a more yeah. significant one for the show. Uh, we spent like two minutes talking to Kurt Angle. Come on. Um, and we've said worse things about him in the longer span of the show. Uh, but, uh, I want to defend Kurt, Kurt Angle. Side news, did you guys hear what happened with Kurt Angle's brother yeah. Saturday night? Might have killed a guy. Yes. Killed a I thought he killed his wife. Yeah, his wife. Oh, oh. Um oh. Uh, no, Kurt Angle's older older uh brother, 67 years old I think he is. Um yeah. right 2 miles, not even 2 miles from where I'm at. Uh apparently there was a domestic uh, call and and I guess he killed his wife allegedly. Um so yeah, the Angle family holy crap uh so uh, that was weird but but though he was there um um actually he got to beat up uh dj zima ion of all things uh when i read the re re results from that friend of the show joe dombrowski also served as the uh, uh ring announcer for the night uh the, the Jer jeremy borash of the night basically and uh no it was uh, it was interesting so so again this was five miles down the road from Ren renegade wrestling alliance which had sanjay debt against uh, amazing red of course as, as we as we mentioned um, and, and of course, RWA wheels, you guys can confirm you guys did over 200 for the night, right? Um, fact, uh, I just got off the phone like maybe an hour before the show just to clarify numbers and stuff like that because we do not like to glorify numbers or falsify numbers. We at last count, still counting ticket subs and money at last count. It went 
from 195 to 205 paid tickets. Mm-hmm. And like that's still going on uh, what they're counting so far. And there might have been like 15 comps, if that. So you're, you're talking basically about 220, 225 at last count. Um, I'm a fan of wrestling, and this as much joking as we all do on these both in the show and the wrestling mayhem show. We don't want to see a company actually go out of business, but it gives that warm feeling to know that a local indie basically outdrew a major company that was only five minutes down the road, and it gives you that warm nice warm feeling to know that that crowd rather come see us than go see some bigger name. And so, I think, I mean, and I think it's also important to clarify. Um, yes, they've kind of come out, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bob Ryder, uh, who I think is the executive producer president of, uh, of TNA wrestling has come out and said, Oh, we did 750 people in Pittsburgh. And, um, and that's been kind of corroborated that that was not the number physically that was there. And, uh, you, I know the show was actually free for CMU student or not CMU, um, uh, Cal U students, California university students. There was a flyer that going around showing, Hey, pick up your free tickets in the office. Uh, so, that's and and this was what did they say the third house show of the year for them. Yeah, and they they even report. I'm reading reports that this was the third lowest house show attendance. Right. So 750 is not a low house attendance in my mind, but when I look at the pictures of fans that may have been at RWA that didn't come to RWA that went there. And you see less than 750, who's lying here? Right, exactly. Why? why? Because, I mean, are you afraid of a little indie company that outdrew you when you're only going to be there once or maybe twice a year? Now, now that has been the version of the story that, of course, we're talking about because, of course, you and I are involved in uh, said company. Um, but, uh, but, but the story is, I think also been, this is the, the further telling of the death of impact wrestling, which has been the unfortunate narrative for a while, as we've discussed here and that supposedly them going off TV, which is still speculation at this point. I want to point that out. There is no confirmation that they are leaving destination America that I am aware of. Maybe, maybe you guys know something that I don't. So, um, what that means, maybe they have something else in the works. Who knows? Um, whatever that means but but you know on paper it doesn't and it's also been kind of uh semi-confirmed uh justin labar apparently on on trip live radio today saying there were a couple hundred quote uh there and there were pictures um time stamped again for about 9 p.m although i think you can take that with a grain of salt because even those ones time stamped at 9 p.m doesn't mean they were taken at 9 p.m they could completely be from i i saw several shots that were uh from about 6 30 or so when doors open show started at 7 30 you can't really go by that uh and uh i, I don't know it, it's it's ring of honor didn't do they did a few hundred probably right when they were in that in that building um yeah. And it was for TV, and it was it was fine. It was just kind of like tucked in the corner of the place, right? Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know how how to feel about that. How that comes off? Um, it definitely doesn't look as bad as they do in a baseball stadium. Although I think even like a show where there was maybe a there was what did I guess about eight hundred people there for the the show up in Niles at the Scrappers Ball Field, it still looks sparse because it's a freaking baseball stadium even though it would have been a fantastic house in a gym in a high school gymnasium. Right. Um, I don't know. It, 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 this is rough. This is rough. Um, but either way, whether those numbers are right or not, I think the bigger story is with TNA down the road, you guys, RWA didn't lose anybody. You had, and I think you stated you had basically the same numbers you did last month. Yeah. And strange enough, we had newer fans, and from what I was, I do remember because we check our seating and our regulars, like you said, they're like, "Are you ready?" Thirty-six fans that couldn't make it because of either school or work or this, that, and the other, 
36 of our regulars. So basically 225 was new and some regulars. So, and that's amazing to just think if those 36 would have made it, we'd have probably had about 250, 260. So, I mean, I love our fans. They're not just fans to us. As you've seen many times, we call them, we call them family because we stick together and it, it felt good to see that many people fill up that gym. And believe me, the gym is filling up so much. Gorg and I will be moving our positions next month. Yeah. Yes, to allow for some more seating potentially. And hopefully I don't get an amazing red almost in my lap again like I did this month. So Gorg, I thought you were going to have a stroke. <laughs> amazing Dude, red lap. It was. Um, so so amazing red got thrown into the chairs uh, towards my general direction. And then I'm, I'm looking down at the monitors doing my switching and I'm just like, that felt really close, and I looked up, and there he is, right, almost to, to my table. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, and let's see the way things are set up. If somebody, if somebody hit hit my table, like you wouldn't have a DVD that was released today. <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> it's kind of precarious. Uh, but anyways, for stopping. The- <laughs> what's that? So thank you, Red, for stopping his. Well, as you did. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, but no, I, I, and, and, you know, I, I don't, again, I don't want to kind of uh, uh, call the death knell of, of, of Impact Wrestling. It sucks, you know, and, and I hope it does. Well. Like I say, there's a lot of people we know that have jobs with them. And, and it is, uh, it was some great exposure. I don't know what they're doing now. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Anybody else have any thoughts on the state of Impact Garza? Have you, you, you've been keeping track of this? Or are you just too excited about Lucha? You don't know. You've got the blinders on right now. you got Lucha blinders yeah, yeah. on. I, I did read the news uh, that uh, TNA had. And they reported 150, mm-hmm. and I, I wasn't surprised because I, I know TNA does terrible numbers usually in house. Uh, I think the the, the thing to take to is uh, how important it is to like in the case of our WWE to to have your loyal fan base and to like gratify them when they do stuff like this uh, because and and this actually made me think like I wonder how many times. Has TNA had to experience this where they go to another town and there's uh, another indie out there with a loyal fan base and people would rather stay with uh, loyal to their indie promotion. So, uh, like, congratulations to RWA. Uh, it, it sounds like you guys had a, a pretty good show. Uh, so I don't know, like I, I'm the guy who likes Impact. I, I'm I'm sad to hear stuff like this, but uh, it, there's no defending them. Uh, I guess at this point, uh, it's reality. We, we have to live with it. Mm-hmm. How did G- GFW do though? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing is promotion too. We've talked about the uh, AJ Styles has come out on the on the missing matches DVD we did with him and says it's promotion. Nobody knows we're in town whenever we're in town. I other than the little bit about free tickets that we're hearing about from California University, which is arguably kind of far. Eh, it's a yeah, it's a little bit down the road. Um, I can't tell you anywhere else. I'm wondering who knew fans of WWE that know Kurt Angle. We're in Pittsburgh. We know who Kurt Angle is. Okay, he's on the walls of 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 eateries as a sports figure here in town. You know, Terry Bradshaw shows up to a place. You're going to outdraw TNA. Okay, just to say hi. How how does this happen? Yeah, it's like I agree. It's like you people. The promotion, I mean, right now, you, Berg showed, just uh, showed a little bit earlier, the flyer is already done. That flyer was done yesterday. We have it up. We're hanging them up. That's called promoting. And that's one of those big things uh, any business person knows. You promote as soon as you can. You don't sit there and sit, go, oh, I'll just let the word of mouth do it. No. Get your butt out of those seats. Go put those flyers up, those posters, radios, newspaper, everything. So these people know what's going on in your area. I mean, TNA itself, I mean, it's like, I, as, as Antonio says, I do. I love TNA. I love what, it's one of those things I used to love watching a lot. 
but I'm seeing even their own wrestlers are leaving and going back to dead companies and that company. And it's like, and it's happening so fast that when you have tapings, you still have those people on your taping for people to watch. You're like, wait a minute, that person's on Raw right now, or that person's at Ring of Honor, or so on and so forth. That's not good. Well, I, I think the bigger problem is nobody notices still. Um, you you have TV and nobody notices. You have, you have yeah. TV and say you're coming to town and nobody notices with the hometown hero. It's just, it just a disconnect. I don't know if they just think, well, we're on TV. Of course people will come out, right? No, that's not the case anymore. People are far too distracted by that stuff. You have to give them a reason. And and on paper, sorry, sorry, Bobby, in a second, but on paper also, I want to point out this card had Ethan Carter, Matt Hardy, Tommy Dreamer against Bobby Roode. Tommy Dreamer, by the way, just wrestled, as I said at the break, up the road in Elizabeth. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> in Kay's Fury against Rhino, who's now in NXT, um, uh, you know, Kurt Angle being there, period, you know? I mean, this is uh, this is nothing to sneeze at, you know? I mean, just those few alone. I mean, like another guy, Matt Hardy, who five minutes down the road packed that place for RWA. And then up the road in December last year, he was here, August and December, in the same area, and drew more people than he did at TNA. Something's wrong. Uh-huh. There's a yeah. big thing um, missing. Well, what, what I was going to say, um, I've heard WWE's having trouble drawing at house shows as well. It and was, even Raw's. It was pitiful. It was pitiful yeah. in Pittsburgh. And, and do you think it's like an industry thing now? Like just it's wrestling's in its downturn phase or? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it seems like it's more popular with like Lucha Underground and, and it's catching on like NXT but like, are people tired of WWE, TNA, all these big, bigger entities? You know? That might be it. I mean, it's just like they need that fresh thing. And mm-hmm. I'm still, again, I've, I've said this before, that NXT packed 13,000, 14,000 people into, into into that arena is is impressive for what it is. You know, uh, they're doing that on an over the top cable network, cable network, not even a cable network. And and TNA, who is on regular cable, yes, an upper thing. But uh, arguably, TNA is accessible to more people than than far more than can probably even get WWE Network because there's a lot of people without the significant uh, si- significant internet to get WWE Network at this point. Those are the people still paying $60 for a pay-per-view because they're out in the cut and they can only get their pay-per-views on a satellite dish. And they're not getting WWE Network at that point. There are a lot of people left out in the cold on this one. Or maybe they just can't afford good internet, you know? So... I don't know. Uh, enough of that. Uh, let's, uh, what do we talk about? Pizza. Pizza is what we talk about right now. Um, cool. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Go check them out. They're friends of the show. Been supporting the podcast and the Tuesday night dealings that we've had here in our chicanery uh, for well over a year. Sliceonbroadway.com. Check them out. South Hills of Pittsburgh and Beachview, Carnegie, PA, and their PGH underscore uh pjs underscore slice on the twitters and your slice on broadway on the facebook and on the instagrams you'll get hungry too buddy uh go check it out there are people in texas putting up rings that say man slice on broadway uh that i'm hearing about and i I love that stuff i love that stuff um people i don't even know man that's great that's great it's getting around you know those people get to Pittsburgh. They're going to try some slice on Broadway, and you will too. All right, we're going to take a look at what happened last week in Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Ooh, that was an odd pop. And uh, we'll be right back with a big question, whatever the heck that's going to be, because I just realized LB isn't here. I can have Stephen Merchant as Wheatley have a conversation with Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Yeah, with Scooby Doo. <laughs> Scooby Doo, Wheatley, and Doctor Who can sit down and have a cup of tea, ale, uh, Scooby snacks, or whatever oil, whatever Wheatley drinks. In the DeLorean. In the DeLorean! <laughs> that could be part outside of the TARDIS. And said, hey, you know, uh, CM Punk needs a shirt to wear on TV when he wore the I Broke Big Show's hand shirt. <laughs> so we printed that shirt and he wore it on TV. 
And that was kind of the beginning of the relationship. From that point uh, on, Colt was contacting my boss, you know, saying that he wanted to make some of his own shirts that he could go and sell at shows. And that kind of snowballed into what the business is now. And June of 2013, they officially launched Pro Wrestling Tees together. We've got an yep. HD camera, six axis gyro. So the drone, it can do flips and whatnot. The range is 300 feet, gets up to 45 miles an hour. You can download an app onto your phone so the camera can live stream. It also comes with a virtual reality headset. So say you're streaming on your phone, you just put your phone in a headset, then you can wear it. So while you're flying, you're seeing what the drone is seeing. What's great about it being modular is that um, every single part is gonna be online. You can swap parts in and out. And then as more accessories are available, you can always attach them onto the drone. Uh, right. So by the time we got to it, we were freaking hyped. And we're like, oh my God, he did it. And then- Don't, don't, don't use that word. What? Hyped. <laughs> I'll Would you really it? bust through that wall? <laughs> Kool-Aid, man. He's got Kool-Aid right through this wall behind me and, and kill my dead owl. Uh, anyways. He said, hey, three more times. He's going to go behind you and kill my dead owl. <laughs> Please go check all of that out, SogatronMedia.com, for the variety of shows that we're doing around here. So now is for the time of the big question. Now we did have to uh, lose uh, DJ Lunchbox to uh, the Wolves uh, very, very late into uh, production of the show uh, and getting prepared. So we did not have a big question. So why not default to our patron of the uh, of, of the group. He's the one that paid a mission to be here, actually. Uh, so let's hand it over to our man in El Paso, Antonio Garza, the wrestlingrevolution.com, representing and partially sponsoring this big question. <laughs> a ripper strand. Well, Sorg, gentlemen of the board, uh, this past Friday, uh, I'm a big Lucha Libre fan, and I had to experience the match between Atlantis and La Sombra, where Atlantis, a 52-year-old, unmasked an up-and-coming, amazing wrestler, La Sombra. Now, uh, in Mexico, if, you, if you're a fan of uh, Lucha Underground, you, you'll notice that the masks are a big thing. Right? It's something that can change your career if you lose it. And because of that, my whole Friday night was, was doomed. I was pissed off at the world because Atlantis have, be, have won. So uh, the big question of this week is, what booking decision could make you go crazy, pissed off, infuriated from your uh, the, the promotions that you follow? Recently? Yeah, so, something, uh, uh, something that's like in current storylines, what's mm -hmm. a direction that could happen that would just make you go crazy? I get really mad when old guys get the belt mm -hmm. in indies. Like, like, um, and this is it is a broad problem. It's a broad problem um, where it's like you know you have a lot of young guys and you're just like, why did that dude that can barely go? And, uh, and, uh, yeah, that, that just to no end, you know, I understand getting the local guy, you know, who's going to stick around, uh, especially when it comes to an Indian booking and scheduling. But, um, yeah, that, there's, that just kind of bothers me. And I feel like that slows down an entire promotion when, when, when that happens, I'm just going to leave that there. Who's next? I got one. Okay. Two scenarios. If Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder win the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament, or sticking with NXT, if Dana Brooke ever becomes the women's champion in NXT, Oof. you will you you will hear me scream from the rooftops because don't like either one of those. Oh, Bobby, you should join us at the midweek board because there there's a current debate between Dana Brooke and Bailey. Uh, fanatics. What? <laughs> Who's a Dana Brooke fanatic out of you guys? Guilty. What? <laughs> what? She talks through her nose. I love this. We didn't real. I didn't realize this 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 distinction. See, you should listen to the other podcast more, Bobby. I know. Uh oh. 
She does more gonna, than just that awkward move. Tap Tony on the head. So, so, so you're you're disagreeing with my notion that 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 Brooke is the um 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 women's Lex Luger. No, I th- I think she is, but uh, but I love her. I, I can't wait for her to be cloned, Bailey. Lex Luger now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's sad. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know. What about you, Wheels? You got an answer? Uh, what? Wow. <laughs> I, honestly, I kind of, in a strange way, agree with Sorg. Because Sorg and I have had this conversation many a times. And it's just like, and I understand certain reasons why older people or the vets get championships. But, honestly, let if there's a val- valid young talent that can go and do it, that's good on a mic, on talent and everything, let that person have it. Because nobody wants to see an old man in a ring anymore. I mean, look at Sting. Did we all really want to see Sting as champion Sunday night? I kind of did. I think Sting well, would have fallen into that uh, previous uh, answer that I had to this question. Yeah. 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 But just because he's never been, though. Mm-hmm. But it would be a notch in his belt. I've no only, I only would have found it acceptable if he got the title and immediately lost to the Sheamus. No. Well, yeah. I would be okay. <laughs> come, well, come on. Sheamus can actually do something. You know? Yeah. So. And it's not going to be Bobby. Don't worry. It's not. It wouldn't have been. Oh, Seamus cashed in on Sting and won the belt. Oh, here comes Randy Orton. Don't yeah. worry. We wouldn't have had that. It's a shameful thing. Uh, lobster head. I miss that song. It was <laughs> the best thing about Seamus, and they took it away. <laughs> Garza, I, Garza, did you answer your own question here? Uh, well, I mean, my previous one was uh, the unmasking. Of someone really young and up and coming, uh, just to give to feed the ego of the old timer. Uh, so it's kind of similar, I guess, to your you guys' answer, uh, which is feeding the ego of the old timer uh, and not pushing the younger guys. All right, and if you, uh, if I got this worded right, basically, uh, what is a booking decision that really bothers you uh, that you see in wrestling? And uh, we're going to put that out. WMS big question hashtag on uh, the Twitters, and I'll make sure you're following at Mayhem Show and adding at Mayhem Show when you're doing that. And uh, let us know what you think. Uh, the you have a chance this week to win RWA's Fall Free for All 2015 with that match we mentioned earlier, the one, the match that beat TNA, Sanjay Dutt versus Amazing Red. Uh, so please. Uh, go, go participate in that and uh, thanks a lot so so we actually had uh, a pretty good question response to last week's question about uh, the so-called nerd culture what nerd nerd crossovers of course we have the comic book one between stardust and uh, and uh, you know and, and, and arrow and the comic books and everything so we had a bit of a response and I can't remember who this is from and I didn't bring it over but we also have more in the email ed burke our other patron uh uh, participate in this one so uh and let me see about queuing this up a a moment uh so i've been uh going back and forth with the idea on geek crossovers would work best in role-playing games actual conflicts have pretty much always been terrible the raw deal card game was okay but it's so hard to compete with Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! in that marketplace. I still want Kevin Feige to run creative for the WWE, but that's just a fantasy. This is just like a wish list for this guy. Um, But anyways, uh, no, I think that the best geek crossover for wrestling is a tabletop RPG. Okay, all right. Uh, But a better crossover for those of us who love wrestling... But the but lack of the uh, physicality to actually partake in it. Uh, of course, this isn't untrue, untried territory either. WWE tried this last decade with their Know Your Role RPG, a game that is universally regarded as terrible. Made with Wizards Wizards of the Coast D20 Open Game License, the developers tried to bolt D and D classic style classes 
abilities and skills onto wrestling, uh, complete with classes of wrestlers whose primary static was intelligence, and his name was John Cena. What? John Cena kicks out a D20. Okay. Uh, but in an era of Kickstarter, independently designed RPGs have exploded in unprecedented numbers. This is the perfect time for a new wrestling game that can allow us to play out all of our lovely little E-Fed dreams. I just need to wait for someone to make it. Oh, wait. I didn't have to wait. And now neither do you. Shameless plug. Ahoy. Wait a minute. Uh, so he sends a PDF. And we got it right here for your BDIs. Look at it on the video. BDIs. That's not right. Worldwide Wrestling, the role-playing game. And uh, I love the guy in a metal mask hitting this person with the chair. That looks like he's straight out of Guitar Hero. Uh, it's Kane. It's Kane? Is it Kane? Kane with his welder mask. Dude, if Kane had like that sweet mask all the time, that'd be all right. And this, this is for mask. real. This is a full-on game. Full-on PDF. Uh, there you go. There you go. This is for real. Hold on. This, so this this was Kickstarter backed, and actually they have some some stuff right here about it being Kickstarter backed. Special thanks and everything. Uh, wow, that's awesome. So I don't know. You guys ready to play a uh, um, a a wrestling? Un Pablo Guerrero is season one. So we have some Pacific wrestling, Huseman Extreme wrestling. This is interesting. I mean, it's mostly text. So, so I don't know how. Oh, wait, we have a diagram of an elbow drop. Cool. From a dependable crowd pleaser. I don't know. I'd love to see our um, role playing game enthusiasts out there maybe give a shot at this. Um, I've always kind of played with the idea of maybe doing a. Oh, maybe this is the perfect time for a Google Hangout uh, role playing game. Yeah, extra oh, life. For extra life? We're going, yeah. It's any game, any, isn't it? Yeah, any game. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to have to hold on to this then. Uh, thank you, Ed Burke, for passing this along to us. Did you just pirate this over to us? Is this a freely available game? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we just partook in something um, unfortunate. Uh, but, but, hey, we'll give, in the meantime, uh, let's give them a plug. If you go to ndpdesign.com slash www.rpg, um, and you can get the PDF for twenty dollars. Since I think I think we did just get this a uh, pirated version of this, so uh, my apologies to that to to NPD Design. Um, but uh, but but uh, hey, we'll get some more people. We should get these people on Indie Mayhem actually, and talk about it. So there's videos. There's actually videos with this cup exhibition series. I'm sorry, I'm I'm just getting into this. And they're using Google Hangout for this too. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so go check that, mpddesign.com and uh, Wild Water Wrestling. Um, thank you so much for that. So from there, uh, and uh, do, 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 do. from there, oh, hey, prowrestlingtees.com, prowrestlingtees.com, prowrestlingtees.com. That's filler while I think about the next thing that I have to say and letting this page load. If you go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, you can check out the Indie Mayhem Show episode 87. Is that right? Yeah, I got the numbers right. Uh, and we had a, a talk with Jeremy, Jeremy Meyer. Germany. Germany. Jeremy Meyer of Pro Wrestling Tees. He's actually the head printer over there at ProWrestlingTees.com. And uh, told us a story about how I, I did not know the backstory of Pro Wrestling Tees. Did you guys? Did you know it was like a joint venture between One Hour Tees and uh, Colt Cabana? Yeah, I knew it was something Colt yeah. Cabana had involvement in it. Yeah, I, figured he, I kind of figured he had involvement, but I didn't know it was like a full-on joint venture. I thought he was just kind of like the first one and, and helped them get it over or something. But I guess I guess that makes sense. And we talked a lot about the business and how it's helping the indies and how they got guys like, uh, you know, uh, you know they got Stone Cold Steve Austin on there and everything. Uh, really good talk over on the Indie Mayhem Show. You can go check that out over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or IndieWrestling.us. We're also posting those shows over there. Uh, but uh, go check it out and please start over at prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS. That's where our shirt store is. And uh, you can support us uh, by picking up a shirt, Property of Mayhem, Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the old logo, New Designs by and Alex Cars. Thank you so much for that. And while you're there, go check out the rest of it. A lot of names you know, a lot of names on the indies as well. You can get a Stone Cold Steve Austin Broken Skull Ranch. You can support CM Punk, even though he might just be called Phil. <laughs> 
You can check out the new product lines like clothesline apparel or uh, the other one, arm bar apparel. Some really good, high quality stuff. I think I saw Sasha Banks wearing a clothesline shirt on Instagram just today, actually. Dalton uh, Castle Store is active now. Dalton Castle Store is on, and he always had some pretty good stuff. Good to see that. The Young Bucks Super Kick Party. Be a part of the Super Kick Party. But please start it off at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. So super kick. That was for my mic. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, I still have somebody's Google Hangout still going here. So we'll just get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. There we go. Hello, everybody streaming right now. Uh, we have an email. So Mad Mike, uh, he is has some thoughts, of course, that I did not paste into the document, and it went somewhere. That's very from organized week. tonight. That's from that's from last week. I, did I paste into the wrong show? What's happening here, guys? What is happening to this show? Ah, this is what happens. Uh, no, but he uh, has some thoughts about Ring of Honor. He did watch the Ring of Honor pay per view and has has a couple ideas. Uh, just wanted to check in since he was able to uh, uh, check out the pay- Ring of Honor pay per view and it greatly enjoyed it. He feels like uh, they did the dual title storyline better than WWE did. Lethal came off looking stronger than Rollins did despite nefarious methods. It was also really cool. Uh, with what they did with the Kingdom storyline. I do feel bad for the boys, though. I have no idea what he's talking about because I didn't watch this. Um, I heard what happened. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what happened? What happened? What, Bobby? Um, Dalton lost the boys. Oh, no. I was yeah, really... To the nefarious... To the nefarious Silas uh, Young? Silas, Silas Young. Oh, no. That's real, Matt. And then, and then the funny thing, though, was he tweeted a picture out afterwards of himself feeding ducks at a duck pond alone and said, now what? <laughs> so kudos to Dalton for that. Wow. Uh, question time. Uh, who would you guys like to see uh, Cena go against at hell in a cell? Unification match with Kevin Owens for the IC belt. <laughs> Adam Rose. Adam Rose. <laughs> what? Know, just threw that out there. Finn Baylor. Uh, not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Oh. I think I think it just ends up happening on a Raw in an open challenge match. You thinking? If he does that again. If he does yeah. that again, oh, I think he's happy. I think it's. I think he's bringing it back, and they're going to bring up a whole. Maybe I'll just have Rhino come up and challenge him. <laughs> Samoa Joe, wouldn't you just lose your minds if Samoa Joe popped up on Raw yeah, next week? That'd be better. Part of the open challenge. I think that'd be great. All right. Uh, but no, who else do you think about for Hell in a Cell? Obviously, it's not going to be a cell match. There's nobody he's really feuding with. Honestly, Cesaro would be good. Uh, maybe. It's too busy jobbing to the big show. <laughs> um, maybe Dalton. Not Dalton. Uh, Dalton Sig- no, he does have, so. That's a good question. Um. Uh, I'd say honestly, Cesaro would be good. There. Well, uh, since, since he pinned the champion again this Monday, I guess you could do Rollins Cena three or whatever number it is on inside the cage now. You can't. And the pattern's already happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It could be a rubber match. Yeah. There, no, they already did the rubber match. It's yeah. one, two, two. But Rollins was won the first one. Yeah. Cena won the next two. So mm-hmm. somebody he hasn't faced yet, yeah. they can win the first match and then lose the next two. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, Finn Balor. There you go. No. <laughs> Samoa Joe. Baron Corbin. Baron, Baron Corbin. Corbin. I yeah. agree. Uh, yeah. All right. So his next question. Um, what would make you want to buy Bound for Glory? So far, they're leading it off with Awesome Kong versus Gail Kim for the belt. I got a good answer for that. Okay. If they announce that this is the last show of TNA, I will be putting my $50 in just to see it live. Okay. Okay. And is this the part where the final part of of the TNA pay-per-view, Vince McMahon comes out and says he bought it? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they do just like a showcase so far, TNA was 
for the last 10 years. Well, not 10 years, the first eight years. Yeah, I, I'd buy it. And then Shane ends up buying it. Yeah. Oh, no. what? Gray hair Shane shows up out of nowhere. It was me all along. I would mark out for that so bad. Yeah. Yes. Here comes the money. I'm okay, uh, I'm going to. And Bobby, even worse on that one. Ben and Vince both are like, we bought it. And they get a tap on their shoulder and they look around and they look down a little bit because this person's a lot shorter. And Feel Bad goes, no, I bought it. Feel Bad? <laughs> Wow. Okay. All right. That that means never mind. What would make me buy Bound for Glory? Um, somebody give me money. I'll buy it. If it was nine ninety nine on the WWE Network. There you go. There you go. That's what <laughs> that it would be. make me buy it. That would be. That's it. That's it. Um. <laughs> Somebody asked me if the, I purchased the pay-per-view the other night. I'm like, yep, I paid my nine ninety nine like every month. We don't do that <laughs> sketchy stuff anymore. There's no reason to. We're freaking human beings. Um, last question. I will defer to you guys since I did not finish Lucha Underground. But I did find I did watch that, that last video on the way out of Season 1 because somebody labeled it as Season 2 trailer. Um, so I got to see everybody uh, uh, starting the Lucha Underground uh, wacky races that I expect to be coming in Season 2. <laughs> So I can't wait for that to happen. <laughs> son of Havoc, <laughs> son of Havoc rides, bitch. That's great. Um, who's Muttley? What do you ask? Who's Muttley? Uh, Conan. Uh, number three. Uh, what storylines are you waiting for a resolution on for Lucha Underground Season 2? I defer to you guys. Bobby Garza. Well, I do particularly want to see... Uh, the rise of Pentagon and Vampiro as a dark mm-hmm. faction school of martial, martial arts. Uh, which will be kind of weird because we now apparently exist in the reign of darkness of Gil Mortis. So mm-hmm. that, that would be kind of weird. I guess uh, I guess I want to see how they develop the Rey Mysterio introduction. Oh, that's happening. Mm-hmm. I yeah, well, that, it, it was teased uh, in the end of the last season. Oh, it was. Yeah, you know when the that guy does like a question mark and with a sign. Ah, that that's the Ray Mysterio logo. Ah, ah. Mm. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, Bobby um, wants to. I, I want to see. I got two. I want to see who. Um, Marty the Moth's sister is. Oh yes. I'm hoping it's Shelly Martinez. Um, and 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 the other one was uh who. Uh, El Dragon Azteca is that is that right? Yeah. Who the new El, El Dragon Azteca is, and if if they're gonna be awesome, which they probably are. Awesome. Do you have any hints on who it is? No, I actually don't. <laughs> okay. I love this true mystery, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Is it Lucha Underground? And by the way, that was the last question. White Alchemist ending transmission for Mad Mike. Isn't this like, okay, you know how I, I, I know I've stated, like, I love when there's like intermingling storylines. Uh, you know, for instance, the love quadra, quadrant, quadrant, whatever with uh, Lana and Rusev and the gang. Um, um, I loved, I love Seth Rollins in the uh, being backstage, freaking out over Kane, not being Kane. You know that kind of stuff. I feel like like Lucha Underground is the epitome of of, of storytelling backstages mixed with the, mm-hmm. the action in ring telling a story. They do it better, and of course they do it better because they concentrate on that solely. And, and and because WWE can't shoot the way that they shoot things. That's true too. That's true too. They I mean, like I mean, I, I, Lucha Underground would not work if they were like, okay, we got to do a live show Monday, and I have a pay per view every month, and we're doing all of this stuff, and we're doing the live thing at Madison Square Garden, but just not as effective. No, no, because I mean, you got what was the best time? What was the best time in WWF? The Attitude Era, right? Mm-hmm. How many shows did the Attitude Era have a week? A lot. Did they? Sunday night. Like four. 
Yeah, yeah, Sunday night heat. No, Smackdown. but for real, for Raw. for for real concentration yeah, on, I need to follow storylines. You had Raw once a week. And Smackdown. Velocity. No. For yes, Raw eventually Smackdown. you had Smackdown. Yeah. But you, when it was good and it was gold, and, and when they turned it around, you had Raw. Yeah. Period. And then you had pay per views. And everything worked. Heat. Week to week, everything worked. And damn it, stop it with Sunday Night Heat. That was later. Shotgun Saturday Night. Shotgun Saturday Night. <laughs> and even before that, Raw was an hour long, right? Now, Primetime Wrestling. Everything is so disjointed. We have a match over here that looks a lot like this match over here because we're we have so much time to fill uh, for just that storyline. It has to carry over. Um, you know, getting from pay per view one to paper pay per view two is not the same amount of time now as it was back in 1996. Because Six back topics. then, back then you had uh, a pay per view one to two was four weeks which meant uh, eight hours of programming. Pay-per-view one to two now is four weeks, which is 40... Uh, <laughs> you see, the like, 48 hours of programming. You see the problem now, right? Um, and I think that's, that's why you'll never have like you did back in the day. You would say up all night. And your fire will continue to burn for good storylines. And you will weep and go. What can't? How does this mask go? Why can't I figure this out? Is it opposite in the video in front of me? It's What's a fruit happening roll up, here? Sork. It's a freak. It's kind of a fruit roll up too. <laughs> and you will just watch Lucha Underground and be happy. That's all I got. It's the Phantom of the Studio. Yeah. <laughs> this is the studio where our podcasting. Burns. <laughs> Better get that check burning. It's burning. It's burning <laughs> so know. much. Pacific, Pacific blue. And my hair's sticking up in the background there. What's going on there? I got I got I got uh I got headphone hair. All right, guys, on that note. What'd you learn from wrestling this week, Bobby? Oh man. <laughs> you gotta start with me. Garza. <laughs> <laughs> I had it in the Facebook group, group uh, but I'll just say it here. As, uh, sure. Uh, Rick Flair took Becky and Paige party on Sunday, and you know what that means. Space Mountain, baby. Woo! Two at a time. I hope wow. it was Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte, just sit over there and watch. This is how it's done. This is what it's like to be champ. I don't think it's supposed to be like that for me, Daddy. Yes, it is. You're a Flair. <laughs> You see that cartoon? I hope oh, that's God. I hope that's a Chibi Wrestlers episode. I just made fun. What's that? I, I just said that was just a bad um, fan fiction right there. We're writing fan fictions all night long. Check oh. boss boss battle for the Sonic the Hedgehog one. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, what about you, Wheels? What about you, Wheels? Is that what you learned this week about fan fictions? <laughs> fan fiction. You know what I learned. From wrestling this week, I learned that um, I learned that I sound pretty good on a microphone, and I speak through sword very much when I do it because it's hysterical. And only sword knows what I'm talking. About. Nobody knows what you're talking about, and it wasn't you. I it wasn't you. Oh, it was I your. Know. It was your buddy beside you, because I'm used to hearing like the announcer saying the five minutes in the match, and I heard this little. I I, I don't even know what like West Newtonian uh, uh, accent he had. Um, all of a sudden, I heard like five minutes in the match. I'm like, what the? Who was that? What's going on over there? You know, and then I'm really the announcer's beside me because he's also commentary for the night because that's how they do it in the indies, okay? Uh, when somebody has a wedding to do. Uh, I feel so bad for Bert. I seriously do. <laughs> the poor guy. True professional. Dad. Holy so, crap. Hey. He, he does not complain well, one bit all night, I got to say. I love the wrap-ups with him lately. I mean, the man is awesome. I enjoy them very much. And it's going to be very interesting to see him and Doc work together with that 
Oh, jeez. Oh, we'll see how that goes. Well, at least it won't be silent while he's in there announcing the match before. <laughs> I hate Bell to Bell yeah. commentary. Uh, it drives me nuts because I have nothing. There's like no context for like beginnings and ends of matches. But anyways, um, who did I miss? Who's left? Bobby? I, mean, I learned that the third member of the Shield is not a good security guard because he's going to jail. <laughs> what? The, the guy that was behind Dean Ambrose. Oh, and then, yeah. And, and then the best part of that was Dean Ambrose smirking at the Wyatt family. Just like, hey, what's going on? And then... Uh, Bray and then, going. Yeah, that's Bray the- laughing. What, Bray going, is that your third oh. man? <laughs> also, I know I mentioned the, these guys a lot, but the We Watch Wrestling podcast this week... <laughs> I cannot watch Braun Strowman's matches now without mentioning Matt McCarthy doing the Braun Strowman voice. It is like the funniest thing because he'll be talking and and he'll do the voice of Braun Strowman talking, how he should sound, the way he looks. It's like, hi, I'm Braun Strowman. (laughs) It's one of the funniest things. It's great. And, And I pictured that all through Night of Champions, like him just making that and then, and raw the next night. It was great. <laughs> I don't know. Drinking the blood of a snake kind of turned her back around, didn't it? I mean, that, I didn't that bring you back? No, it did not. That made it worse. <laughs> I caught a snake one time and drank its blood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Strowman. <brought strolling. laughs> it's great. Wow. It's great. He's, he's a genius. Oh, <laughs> uh, I learned. I learned that my father-in-law uh, stopped watching wrestling because of the Shield and Bray Wyatt. Really? Yeah, that's why he left. That's why he left, and I was wow. just like, I, 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 I know, right? Uh, it's like, well, that's when I got started getting tired of it. I'm like, what? You, I think that's before they started having the good matches, but I don't know. Um, but no, no, it, it was, it was, yeah, it was one of those like, but that was the good times, wasn't it? You know. Yeah. Um, but no, he's very um, doesn't he doesn't like how how they uh, how you put it how they um. You know how they went about things because that's when they were running in probably at first and helping out CM Punk. So, oh, so. Man. Oh. all right, from the uh, Facebook, Keiko said Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods is a national treasure. I'm with you on that one. He's the MVP as far as he is like the Santino that's better than Santino. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, he did a very great Rufio. He did. Oh, it was a great Rufio. Hold on, we're getting to that. Uh, also from here, Jen Karn says uh, he, she's really sick and bored of the Wyatt family and Dean and Roman always getting their asses kicked. Nah, I think it's it's how fine. Could, how could she be sick of Braun Strowman? Braun Strowman? He just showed up. He's just here. I'm just a new guy. Hi, guys. I'm just a new guy. I'm just a new guy. I'm here with the Wyatt. I think the butt of a snake. <laughs> I skinned the snake once and ate drank its blood. I drank its blood. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Man. <laughs> Try watching him on Raw now, kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope he's on SmackDown this week. <laughs> Jack Richard, uh, I learned that the next paper, get out of that mode, the next paper review, Charlotte is going to ask Rick just to drop her off across the street and she'll walk to the event. <laughs> 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 oh, James, and then James on the Facebook group learned that a 56 year old shouldn't be uh, taking table bumps. Who took table bumps? Yeah, what? 56. Finish an ounce table. Oh, yes, yeah, Sting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, uh, him uh, apparently legitimately injured, and there was uh, audio of uh, you think you're hearing Seth Rollins saying, That was my bad. Uh, when he he took the turnbuckle, yeah, yeah. Uh, James, no, that's the one I did. Alex says he learned that uh, Raw, as good as Raw was last night, I now have until early next year for a really good wrestling to be back on TV. <laughs> uh, of course, with the Lucha Underground. Uh, wow, there's a lot of sub. I love that replies to specific comments are on Facebook now because there's a lot of like sub discussions having on mm-hmm. here. Wow. Okay. Uh, Kyle learned that the New Day are actually the grown-up versions of Rufio and the Lost Boys. Makes sense. Makes sense. 
Yep, yep, good. Uh, Daniel also learned that revenge booking is still a thing. See Sting and AJ and Punk. Oh, there you go. Yeah. If you believe, Rob over on the Facebook page said that a valuable life lessons as always, but I also learned that I can never stay mad at Kane. If I get bored with him as a character, it doesn't mean that he can't turn it around and make himself entertaining again. I think he's just selling us all insurance right now uh, for the yes. most part. Uh, and let me just double check. Uh, in the meantime, hey guys, uh, you can be a part of this live dots wrestling mayhem show.com every Tuesday night about 9 p.m. Eastern time. And a lot of discussion that yeah, got really weird and probably could get a lot of us in trouble in between uh, parts of the show, for instance. Uh, so, and actually, some of that gets the gold, including uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Garza here. Is are you gonna you can listen to it again, Garza? Are you gonna yeah. listen to the gold that you were a part of this week? Course. Yeah, you're just like that's how. That's what I sound like. Pay like, for that shit. <laughs> Who is that guy? Who is that 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 handsome voice over there? Oh, that's me. That's me <laughs> on the Mayhem show. <sighs> It's not what I say every week. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, from there, uh, go wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Please subscribe on the audio and video versions. Um, just subscribe on every format that we have plugged there. It'll help, please. It, it just helps the show, even if you never do anything with it. Just just, just go subscribe on all the things. Leave a, leave a comment. And don't just leave a comment on this podcast. Please also leave a comment on... Any podcast you listen to, we watch okay. wrestling, any Nerdist, whatever the heck it is, even if it's the big guys, because even the big guys are small guys in this world of podcasting. They have to compete also with, with your cereals and crap like that. Stop suggesting cereal. When I listen to the Midweek War Stitcher, I'm sick of it. I'm not going to listen to cereal. I don't care you if everybody cereal, else is. podcast about cereal? Yeah, that's I right. I, I that's right. Justice, Maybe that's, that's how we picked it up. Uh, but anyways... You can also drop us a line at uh, 412-206-WMS0. It is the hotline. You can leave a voicemail. I want to hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. Is it sexier than Antonio Garza's? Come on, sorry. Let me know how you roll your R's. Did we even get you to roll your R's tonight, man? I don't know. I, I guess. You don't know. You just do it. It's just oh, the way you yeah, talk, yeah, right? It just, so it just happens. <laughs> it's just like it's just it the. Happens. It's a thing. It's a, that's how we do it down here. We got, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what the hell? Um, and yep. what what else did we plug at the end of the show? Basicsickness.com for the awesome music before and after this and the indie mayhem show. And uh, email. and uh, man, that's all I got. That's all I got email. left in me. What's that, Bobby? That's the email. Bobby, F oh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com? You mean good times? Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Strowman. I'm, I'm, I'm Strowman. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I change it every time, don't I? I <laughs> Was it better with the lisp? Should I go back to the no, lisp? No, no, don't go back to the don't lisp. Back no, to the lisp? I'm going to offend it's somebody. Just, He's just very boisterous. He's like, I'm Braun Strowman. Hi. He kinda, he's kind of like Harry Carey a little bit. <laughs> I I I would and the blood of a snake that I killed. <laughs> if you were a snake, would you skin yourself and then drink your own blood? <laughs> All right. Well, I pick my nose and eat it too. <laughs> um anyways, that's it. Thank you so much Antonio Garza at the W Revolution on the Twitters, wrestling wrestlingrevolution.com. Yes, sir. There you go. Right, anything cool coming up you need to tell the people about? Well, we, we have uh, uploaded our our big weekend reviews for Night of Champions, uh, All Star Extravaganza. Uh, in in this week, we'll be reviewing the RWA Aggression and RWA Fall Free for All. So. Uh, look forward to those because I just emailed him those today. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I left them off the mailing list last month by accident. It was very hard. August was very hard for me. Also, uh, Bobby F. J. Town on the Twitters. He's also a part of the great insert coin to begin.com and boss battle where they also make up new things. Sonic's uh, fan fiction based on Save of the Bell. Yes. Oh man, I didn't even is that thing? Of course, that's a thing that exists. Oh boy, waku waku. 
<laughs> we don't even know what that game was. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Wheels is the guy over at a Re- a Renegade Wrestling Alliance doing the noises in the, your ears if you go to the show. Uh, at Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitter's RWA Live dot com. But you can buy your tickets online now. I love. I love the wording. Um, um, you can buy your tickets online. The technology is here. Was the yes. thing I kept hearing over the weekend. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, and I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Sorgatron.com. Sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, there's so much going on, including the return of Sawtooth Willie. Yes, he looks familiar. Uh, please go check that out and subscribe to you. Look for Sawtooth Willie, now a Facebook page and YouTube channel. Subscribe to both of those so you never miss an episode. Releases every Monday. And we have enough episodes scheduled. At, you're going to check out a new Sawtooth Willie until the first week of December. I owe that son of a bitch money. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, chat room live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.